I'd like to start uh, with a very direct question and a, a very hyped one as well. Uh, <laughs> Inter ZTS, Inter Spot ZTS. So, what is your uh, what is your outlook on the date? Uh, it's going to be next week or not so? Uh, and what do you think is going to be uh, the volume in the first few days? Uh, it's going to be like the Bitcoins ones or uh, a few less. Yeah, so um, there's no like set like this is exactly how it's going to go down, but it looks like the SEC is asking all these issuers to submit their final prospectus documents or S1s. And that'll include like all the information about exactly how the fund is going to run. But most importantly, to most people who care, it's going to include the fees. And theoretically, those should come today, probably around market close is my guess. But um, we should we could see those coming in any day, any time now. Um and then it looks like the SEC is going to do what's called an accelerated approval. But all it means is they're going to do the same thing they did with the Bitcoin ETFs. They're going to line everyone up and launch them at the same time, theoretically sometime next week. Most likely, in our view, it's going to happen next Tuesday, so July 23rd. Um, so that's our base case. I think we're, we're expecting them to launch next week. Um, not It's not a certain done deal, but that's looking like what should happen. Um, how are they going to trade? It's a good question. Um, I do not think we're going to see the same blockbuster levels of trading that we saw with the Bitcoin ETFs. They're, the the interest just isn't the same. Um, yes, like on crypto Twitter and in ETH communities, everyone's very excited that these things are launching. Uh, but it's kind of like um, it just doesn't have the same level of interest that we that we saw with Bitcoin. That said, um, Bitcoin also launched like it had just been going up for four straight months when it launched. And so there was a lot of interest in it and then it dipped and then a lot of money came into the ETFs and we saw it go up another, uh, you know, 20 grand uh, from low forties into the high sixties, low seventies. Um, so who knows what's going to happen with Ethereum. I do think that they are going to see significant inflows. I do think they're going to see significant interest under pretty much any metric for an ETF launch. We expect these things to be really strong launches. The problem is, People in the crypto world are just thinking like it's going to be what we saw with the Bitcoin ETFs, and they need to realize those Bitcoin ETFs were the best launch in the history of the world as far as any fun launch goes. Like there is nothing else to compare that to. So even if we're expecting like twenty percent of the flows, you could see a lot of trading volume in these things. But we think like twenty percent is a is a good estimate. And even if they see twenty percent of the flows, that would still be one of the most successful ETF launches in history uh, when compared to the Bitcoin ETFs. So. That's our overall outlook on what's going on, but we can we can dive into anything from there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James, uh, do you believe that uh, Grayscale might initially make a sell-off within the Ethereum ETF, just uh, as they did with Bitcoin? Yeah, so that's one positive thing that Ethereum ETFs have going for them is um, if you look at a lot of the sales of GPTC, one, it was people moving from GPTC to a lower cost ETF or possibly to Bitcoin directly because we didn't see the amount of like price impact from the GPTC selling that you might expect when you see <laughs> tens of billions of dollars coming out of something. Um, but part of that is because like one, like I said, people were moving out and rebuying Bitcoin in some other way, whether that's through another ETF or uh, Bitcoin directly on an exchange, putting in a cold wallet, who knows exactly what people were doing. Um, but also, they had, there was a lot of GBTC in bankruptcies. Like GBTC was at the center of like pretty much every blow up. Like it impacted Three Arrows Capital, Genesis and Gemini were at the center of the GBTC issue, BlockFi was at the center. So there was just GBTC shares in bankrupt estates like all over the place. And most of those sold those shares, Gemini and Genesis did not, ironically enough, which is part of the reason why they were able to pay back their creditors in kind uh, rather quickly and at 100%, which is kind of unheard of. Gemini truly needs to be rewarded by the industry and should be like um, viewed as held up for, for doing things very well as a side note. Um, but yeah, like you had tens of, you had billions and billions of dollars being sold by these estates, FTX, and they just went straight to cash. Yes, there are probably some estates that have ETH that are going to sell if they haven't sold already. Um, there are people that likely bought ETH, Grayscale's Ethereum trust, uh, when it was trading at a 20% discount, hoping to get it to a 0% discount, which is roughly trading at now. Um, so they might sell as soon as they can, are able or if they haven't already. 
uh, just to lock in those gains. But for the most part, I just don't see the same level or percentage of assets being sold that we saw with GBTC. There will be some selling and people are going to sell ETH. They are likely, depending on what Grayscale does with the fee, um, they're likely to sell some ETH and move over to, to other ETFs or Ethereum directly, um, depending on what they do. But the other thing here is that they're, it looks like they're going to launch their mini trust. So if your listeners were paying attention, Grayscale has been talking about launching this Bitcoin mini trust for months now. Uh, it's going to be ticker BTC on the US exchanges. And that's going to come with like something like a 15 basis point expense ratio which is really low. It would undercut everyone, but it just hasn't launched yet. They also are doing the same thing. They also have the ticker ETH for their Ethereum mini trust. And it looks like what they're, so what they're doing with GBTC is they're going to launch BTC as a spin out. So 10% of your, the assets in GBTC are going to spin out into BTC. And they're doing the same thing with ETH E. So it should save some of the outflows on that front as well, because 10% of the assets are going to go right to another Ethereum ETF product. Um, and we also don't know what they're going to do with fees on ETH. Are they going to stay above 1% like they did with GPTC because they have $9 billion in assets? Maybe. Um, but if they launch ETH, the mini trust at the same time, that'll alleviate some of the outflow. So there's a lot of things that um, this setup doesn't look quite as potentially risky on the supply side um, for the Ethereum ETS. But again, this is just like me trying to read the tea leaves. I, I, I can't see the future exactly, but this is just how I'm looking at it. Uh, so another thing, uh, the Bitcoin ETFs uh, was something that, uh, in my view at least, uh, was already uh, confirmed. Like uh, Bitcoin is a commodity, like uh, okay, all right. So uh, it's a, a, a digital gold uh, a, a ETF uh, wouldn't uh, cause so so many problems. But with Ether, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, we have a gray area around it. So uh, it's a commodity, it's a security, how we launch this. Uh, do you think that uh, with the approval of uh, uh, ETF, Ether, Ether, ETF, would be more uh, easy to, in the future, approve other ETFs like Solana or anything like that, or it's not related? Um, there is some, it's nuanced, right? Um, there was a lot of people that feared, including us, that the SEC was going to go. Actually, I should say, I never thought the SEC was going to try to claim Ethereum itself as a security. What I think and still think they might try to do under Gary Gensler, which I think could change depending on what happens with the election in November, is say that staked Ethereum is still a security, um, basically because you're expecting um, profit, what have you, from from the yield that you get from staking. Um, he does not like staking as a service. There's all these issues that he obviously has with staking and allowing these things to be called commodities. I don't agree with that, but I can see the rationale for why they would think that. Um, but I think approving these ETFs, these ETFs for Ethereum and for Bitcoin are approved as commodities-based trust shares. Um, which means these things have to hold commodities. So all of a sudden, Ethereum is a commodity as far as the SEC is concerned. Now, there are some things that can be both a commodity and a security, and I, Gary Gensler still refuses to say whether he believes Ethereum is a commodity or security. Um, I wrote a note last fall basically saying the SEC won't say it, but their actions are implicitly stating that Ethereum is a commodity. Um, so I think uh, by approving this, this kind of hinders their argument against other assets like Solana that you hinted, um, because there's enough similarities there. Obviously, there are differences, but there are enough similarities there to say, like, if this isn't a security, how is our token who did the who launched the exact same way as Ethereum? How is our token a security? Uh, and there's a lot of nuance there. Um, we do know that the SEC is actively calling Solana a security in multiple lawsuits against the likes of Kraken and Coinbase. So I don't think under this administration with Gary Gensler at the SEC, head of the SEC, um, I just can't see other assets getting approved anytime soon. That said, if a Trump gets in, we know for a fact J.D. Vance was very public and against uh, Gary Gensler and the way he's handled crypto. I mean, as far as crypto goes, Trump picking J.D. Vance as his uh, VP is probably one of the best picks you can you can get. Uh, at, uh, other politics aside, no matter what you may think, it's it's relatively he's he's probably good for crypto. Um, so if you get a new head of the SEC, then we can talk about some of these other assets getting through. But right now, under this administration, under the current rules, there's just no way another asset is getting an ETF in the U.S. anytime soon. Uh, look, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you had CME futures markets, you had immense volume and trading and open interest on those futures markets. 
you had futures ETFs. Uh, you've had all these different steps that got Bitcoin and Ethereum. So theoretically, I think you could accelerate timelines and some other stuff if you go through the same process, but you're still looking at uh, like possibly a couple of years before you get another another asset in there. The one caveat again is, as I said, one Trump getting into um, winning the election. Uh, he will likely be more pro crypto. There's no guarantee on that front. It could all be talking. The other thing is if you get a market structure bill out of Congress that specifically explains what the CFTC purview is, what the SEC purview is. So there's no infighting about who controls this stuff. And also that defines what is security and what is a commodity. Because the, the CFTC says, I don't even remember what the number is, I think 75% or some large percent is not securities. These are commodities. The SEC and Gary Gensler think almost the exact opposite. So you need like both who has the jurisdiction. And then with that, you'll get like, are these securities or commodities? And then we can start potentially getting these um uh, these ETFs approved. And also if you bring these exchanges in house with like these different regulations, basically what the SEC is concerned about is they want to be able to surveil the underlying market for fraud and manipulation. The way they do that right now is by looking at the CME futures market. There is no other regulated market to do that right now uh, for any other asset. That said, you get into relationships or agreements, surveillance sharing agreements with Coinbase, Kraken, Binance now, which has a healthy relationship with the U.S. by force, uh, Gemini, you name it, all of a sudden you might get some of that that could allow us to get the other assets. But it's a lot of it is up in the air, and I think November is is going to be a critical uh, fork in the road for determining how likely that is. Yeah, the election is determinant the flux inflow of ETFs. And, and we were already seeing uh, significant inflows into the Bitcoin. What is the total potential of spot Bitcoin ETFs uh, going forward? Uh, so you're asking how big do you think a spot Bitcoin ETFs could get? Yeah. So I think some people like think they're going to get like a trillion dollars in assets. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in that camp. I guess theoretically, in a world of hyper Bitcoinization, which I'm not sure I'm full. I'm a full believer in. Um, maybe, but the way we think, if you look at gold ETFs, uh, precious metals ETF, there are just around one percent of U.S. ETF assets. So if we just look at the U.S. ETF market, uh, there the U.S. ETF market is over nine trillion, I believe, right now. Um, so if you think like one to two percent of those assets we think could go into Bitcoin or crypto like ETFs, if more of these crypto uh, assets are launched or digital assets are allowed to launch, that number could go up because you can get more diversified. But if you just look at this and say, all right, one to two percent of ETF assets as like a, a good bogey over the next couple of years for for the growth potential here, that would give you like the 90 billion AUM to and the 2% would be 180 billion AUM. And right now they're around 60 billion. Um, so they're kind of close to that 1% number. Uh, actually, I take it back. We're at 9.6 trillion in the US. So it'd be 96 to like 190. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's roughly where we think these things could sit. Part of the thing with Bitcoin though is like a lot, there's this an often a, a misunderstanding between flows and assets. Um, Flows, like once they come in, that's where they sit, right? So if a billion dollars came in when they were at forty thousand dollars a coin, and then it goes to eighty thousand, the assets are now two billion, but the flows into those products were still only one billion. Um, so basically, assets are impacted by price. So you see Bitcoin go up fifty percent from here, and all of a sudden you're well over a hundred billion dollars in in AUM for the US ETFs alone. Um, so it's hard to know, but but I think that. Yeah, like I said, that one to two percent range, maybe a little higher, particularly over time, as we get some other digital assets uh, approved in the space, could get up to five percent of a portfolio. Uh, that said, I don't think that would be all Bitcoin specifically. I think if you get up to the, something where you're going over three percent of the U.S. ETF universe, um, that you have to have a diversified offering of of different digital assets. Se você quiser aprender mais sobre esse tipo de conteúdo, entender mais como o Bitcoin funciona no seu mercado spot, mercado futuro, como é que a negociação de Bitcoin funciona de modo mais técnico, você pode conhecer os nossos cursos, os nossos materiais educacionais lá no Block Trends Pro. Lá tem bastante conteúdo e bastante material para você entender mais especificidades do mercado do Bitcoin e de ativos digitais, além de, obviamente, ter diversos conteúdos sobre investimento, trade e análise de mercado, tá?